فلقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we will be commencing a new surah namely surah al-anfal we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this surah easy for us in our <coughs> recitation translation understanding and implementation and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us consistent and regular and facilitate for us in a manner that we are able to understand this surah word by word without missing a single class Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen A'uzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Yas'alunak Anil Anfal Qul Al-Anfal Lillahi Wal Rasul Fattakul Allah Wa Aslihu Zata Bainikum Wa Atiyu Allah Wa Rasulahu In Kuntum Mu'mineen in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. They ask you, O Prophet, about the spoils of war. Say the spoils of war are for Allah and His Messenger. Fattakullah, so fear Allah, wa aslihu zata bainikum, and set right your differences between yourselves. And set right your differences between yourselves. And obey Allah and His Messenger in Kuntu Muminin if you are believers. Allah ke naam se jo beintiya mehrban ko brahm farmane wala, wo apse sawal karte hain Allah ke Rasul maale ganimat ke baare mein. Keh dijiye maale ganimat Allah aur uske Rasul ke liye. Bas daro Allah se aur durust rakho tumhari an apas ke rishte. اور اطاعت کرو اللہ اور اس کے رسول کی اگر ہو تم ایمان والے انما المؤمنون الذین اذا ذکر اللہ وجلت خلوبہم و اذا تولیت علیہم آیاتہو زادتہم ایمانا و علی ربہم یتوکلون الذین یخیمون السلاة و مما رزخناہم ینفقون اولائک ہم المؤمنون حقا لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتِ دَرَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِسْخٌ كَرِيمٌ Only the believers are those إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ When is mentioned the name of Allah وَجِلَتْ خُلُوبُهُمْ Tremble their hearts And when is recited upon them آيَاتُهُ His verses زَادَتْهُمْ إِمَانًا Increases in them faith and upon their Lord, Yatavakkalon, they put their trust. Those who establish Salah and from what we have provided them, Yun Fihun, they spend. Those they are the believers in truth or the true believers. For them are ranks near the Lord, for maqfiratun and forgiveness, what is khun karim and provision, generous or sustenance, generous. صرف ایمان والے وہ ہیں جب لیا جاتا ہے اللہ کا نام کامتے ہیں ان کے دل اور جب پڑی جاتی ہے ان پر اس کی آیتیں تو بڑھ جاتا ہے ان میں ایمان اور اپنے رب پر وہ توقل رکھتے ہیں جو لوگ قائم کرتے ہیں نماز اور جو کچھ ہم نے رزق دیا انہیں وہ خرش کرتے ہیں یہی وہ سچے مومن ہیں یہی لوگ وہ سچے مومن ہیں ان کے لئے درجات ہیں ان کے رب کے ہاں اور مغفرت اور رزق کریم What is the meaning of the word انفال انفال is the plural of نفل What is the meaning of نفل Voluntary, additional We perform a salah and we also after the faraz and the sunnah salah we perform the نفل salah What does it mean? Which means we are performing an additional salah called nafil salah, which is not obligatory or mandatory, but still we perform it to add value to the salah. Our main focus is the faraz of the salah. That's the main focus. 
The nafil is the additional salah. Anybody who focuses on the nafil but does not focus on the faras, then his namaz becomes batil. So our entire focus is on the faras. The nafil is the additional. And in this particular case, in the context of the battle of Badr, we have translated Anfal as spoils of war, which means an additional gift given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a war fought by the believers against the disbelievers. Goya ke ye nafil hai. Jo Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala batawre niyamat maal jo hai momino ko deta hai jo momin jo musalman jo sahaba Kuffar ke khilaf jang kiye aur jang se jo mali ghanimat unko hasil hua isko jo hai anfal se translate kiya gaya. The entire focus was to fight this war against the disbelievers. In addition to that, Allah gives them a gift which are called spoils of war but the entire focus is on waging a war against the hostile forces and not on the spoils of war. And this is what was done by the Sahabas. Their entire focus was to crush the hostile forces in order that they could spread the message of Islam without any hurdle or any obstruction. So that the Islam can reach Islam to the people. The work of Islam is able to be able to do it. And for this, the rules of اس کے مقابلے میں انہوں نے دشمنان اسلام کے ساتھ مدبیر کرنا پڑا جس کی بدولت اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے ان کو صرف جو ہے کامیابی نہیں دی بلکہ کامیابی کے ساتھ مال غنیمت بھی نوازا تو گویا کہ جو ہے اصل ہمارا جو فوکس صحابہ کا تھا وہ جو ہے جنگ لڑنا تھا ان دشمنان اسلام کا زور توڑنا تھا اور اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی بطور نعمت ان کو مال غنیمت جو دیتا ہے وہ ہے انفال Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this anfal, this spoils of war in the context of the battle of Badr belongs to Allah and the messenger. And even otherwise, for any war fought for the cause of Islam, under the banner of Islam, against the hostile forces, fought against the hostile forces, the, the wealth that would be given or acquired is called male ghanimat and it belongs to allah and the messenger means it's allah and the messenger who will decide how this distribution of this anfal will take place as we go down further into the surah we will get to know those particular instructions but before that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says three things are very very important because while distributing the spoils of war Three things are of paramount importance. Three buniyadi, jo ahem, jo nukat hai, jo sifat hai, jo momino ke andar hona chahiye, ye zaruri hai. Maale ghanimat taqsim karne ke waqt pe ya usse pehle, ye sifat momino ke andar hona chahiye. Number one is fear of Allah. When you have fear of Allah, there will be no injustice done to anybody. Number two is set right the matters of differences between yourselves. Which means, be united. Don't give space to shaitan to create disunity between yourselves. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is that you obey Allah and his messenger. Obedience to Allah and his messenger. Number one is, Fattakullah. Number two is, Vaslihu zata bainikum. And number three is, Atiullah wa Rasul. If these three, these three things are in place, then everything will go fine. But if there is no less than that, in the case of the peace, in the case of the relationship, or in the case of the Lord and the Messenger, then you will not be able to do it. You will be able to do it. And you will be able to do it. And in the case of the Malik Ghanimat, all kinds of ill feelings will emerge. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general is about 
who are the true believers in the eyes of Allah? We are all believers, Alhamdulillah. We pray that Allah has included us in the list of the believers. This is very important. We are all believers. We are all Muslims. We are all Muslims. This is just a dream, a dream. But in the real sense, Allah is in the face of Allah. We are all Muslims and Muslims. We are all Muslims. That's the last question. So now Allah is mentioning some of the salient features and the excellent qualities or the true qualities that need to be there in the believers. What are they? Number one, Iza zukir Allahu wajilat kulubuhum. When Allah's name is mentioned, then the hearts tremble out of fear. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ka naam liya jata, to unke dil Allah ki khashiyat se kaamte hain. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَ تَلِهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ اِمَانَ اور جب پڑھی جاتی ہے ان پر اللہ کی آیت ہے یعنی قرآن پاک پڑھا جاتا ہے زَادَتْهُمْ اِمَانَ دَنْ their ایمان increases ان کے دلوں میں ایمان میں اضافہ ہو جاتا ہے نمبر تری وَعَلَى رَبِهِمْ اَتَوَقَّلُونَ and upon the Lord they put their trust in spite of having all the resources yet they put their entire trust on Allah سبحانہ وتعالی so nothing can come to their rescue or nothing they can avail from if it is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if it not if it is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowing it to happen jab tak Allah na chahe lakh kitne bhi wasail humare paas maujood ho kuch nahi honne wala so the true believers put their entire trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as I always say tawakkal is an essential component of iman itself Three, sorry, the fourth, those who establish salah. Number five, from whatever we have provided them, that means out of the wealth, they spend in the way of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, those who possess these three qualities, sorry, these five qualities, number one is, Iza zukir Allahu wajilat khulubuhum. Number two is, Waiza tuliya talim ayat huz adatum imana. Number three is, Wala rabbi na tawakkalun. Number four is, those who establish salah. الَّذِينَ يُخِيمُونَ السَّلَاةِ اَنْ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ يَنْفِقُونَ is the fifth. Allah says, these are the true believers. And for them are ranks, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bin, in the Jannat, Allah will give them high ranks, high positions. We pray na, Allah should provide us Jannat al-Firdos. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should bless us with Jannat al-Firdos is the highest place in paradise which the Prophet himself has asked us to do dua. But that can be acquired or attained with the mercy of Allah with these qualities within us. So Allah says, there are ranks near the Lord. There's forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a generous provision and sustenance from Allah. So very excellent opening verses of Surah Anfar. Mark these verses, very powerful verses. Go through them again and re-energize. And let's re-energize ourselves and make sure that we foster these values and qualities in our lives as true believers. May Allah include us among them. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alam. كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ يُجَادِلُونَكَ فِي الْحَقِّ بَعْدَ مَا تَبَيَّنَا كَأَنَّمَا يُسَاخُونَ إِلَى الْمَوْتِ وَهُمْ يَنْزُرُونَ كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ As brought you out your Lord referring to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying As brought you out your Lord from your house, bilhaq, with truth. And verily, a group among the believers, lakarihon, surely disliked it. Yujadilunak, kafilhaq, they disputed with you concerning the truth after what was made clear. Kaannama yusakhuna ilal maut, as if they were driven towards death. Wahum yanzurun, while they were looking. جیسے نکالا آپ کو آپ کے رب نے آپ کے گھر سے حق کے ساتھ اور بے شک ایک گروہ ایمان والوں میں سے وہ ضرور ناپسند کیا وہ جھگڑ رہے تھے آپ سے حق کے معاملے میں بات جو واضح کر دیا گیا گویا کہ وہ ہانکے جا رہے ہیں عوض کی طرف جبکہ وہ دیکھ رہے تھے وَإِذْ يَعِدُكُمُ اللَّهُ اِحْدَتْ تَوْئِفَتَيْنِ أَنَّهَا لَكُمْ وَتَوَدُّونَ أَنَّهَا غَارَتْ 
وتمنى ان غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله ان يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المؤمن when promised you allah is that one of the two parties when promised you allah one of the two parties that it shall be for you annaha lakum that it shall be for you while you wished anna ghaira zati shaukati takunu lakum that the one without arms should be for you wa yuridullah but wish that the truth should be established by his command and he may cut off the roots of the disbelievers that he may establish the truth that he may establish the truth and prove false the falsehood even though may dislike it or hate it the criminals aur jab vaada kiya tumse allah ne do groh mein se ek ke wo hoga tumhare liye lekin tum chah rahe the ke wo groh baghair हथियार के हो तुम्हारे लिए जबकि चाहता था अल्लाह कि वो साबित करे हक को अपने हुक्म से और काट दे जड़ काफिरों के ताकि साबित हो जाए हक और बातिल हो जाए बातिल अगर चेके नापसंद हो मुजरिमों को अगर चे कितना ही नापसंद हो मुजरिमों को اس تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم اني ممدكم بالف من الملائكه مردفين وما جعله الله الا بشرا ولتطمئن به قلوبكم وما النصر الا من عند الله ان الله عزيز حكيم when you sought help from your lord then he answered your prayers or then he responded to you that i shall aid you bi alfim min al malaikati murdifin with 1000 of the angels one after the other in succession wa ma ja'alahu allah and not made it allah except as a glad tidings and that may be satisfied with it kulu bukum your hearts wa man nasru illa min indillah and not is victory or help except near allah verily allah is is un hakim almighty all wise jab tum madad talab kar rahe the apne rab se to allah ne tumhari dua ko qubool kiya ke mai madad karunga tumhari hazar farishton se lagatar aur nahi banaya usko allah ne siwa ek khushkhabri aur taake itminan hasil kare uske zariye tumhare dil और नहीं मदद या कामयाबी सिवाय अल्लाह के यहां से बेशक अल्लाह खूब गालिब खूब हिकमत वाला है बैकग्राउंड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्सेस फॉलो देम वेरी केयरफुली पेड यू अटेंशन बिकॉज इन द बैकड्रॉप ऑफ दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन व्हिच आई एम इंशाल्लाह गोइंग टू ब्रीफली कन्वे टू यू इट विल बी इजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड दीज वर्सेज इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट वी नो दैट प्रॉफिट सल्लाम ओनली एंड ओनली विद अल्लाह सुबह reach madina safely during the time of emigration makkah se jab allah ke rasul allah ke hukum se hijrat ke liye nikle ye khalis allah ki madad thi ki wo sahi salim madina pahunche now this itself was a psychological defeat for the meccan quraish for having let go prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam safely outside makkah because we know at the time of hijra they had garrod his house encircled his house with a plot and a strategy to kill him when he would set out of the house but it was allah subhanahu wa taala's larger plan wa makaru wa makara allah wallahu khairul makirin they plot and plans allah and allah is the best of planners allah subhanahu wa taala ne apne madad se rasul akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ko he took him safely to madina from then onwards their blood was boiling 
because they let go an excellent opportunity of allowing the Prophet ﷺ to safely emigrate from Mecca and reach Medina. And we know when the Sahabas emigrated from Mecca and went to Medina, by and large, all of them went empty-handed. All of them. One incident. Of course, we'll discuss about this Hijra matter, inshallah, later on. But one incident, since I already was about to tell you, Hazrat Suhaib Rumi, anhu, one of the Sahabi of the Prophet, sallam, when he was just taking his meager positions with him and he was just moving out of Mecca, the enemy stopped him. He said, Where are you going? He said, I'm going to Medina. What for? Because I wish to emigrate in order to practice Islam. What are you carrying with you? My personal belongings. Didn't you earn them from Mecca? He said, yes. So therefore, if you are emigrating to emigrating to Medina, we will allow you to go to Medina on one condition, that you leave behind everything and go empty-handed. Without a pause or any thought, Hazrat Suhaib Rumi said, okay, I'm leaving behind everything here and I'm going empty-handed. This was the case, by and large, with most of the Sahabas. It's not easy, huh? So not an easy decision. Anyway, we'll discuss this later when we come to those verses. <clears throat> what I was trying to arrive at was that Prophet Sallallahu reached Medina. And after going to Medina, you know what all happened? In the second year after the Prophet Sallallahu emigrated to Medina, this battle called Battle of Badr takes place. What are the causes of this battle to have taken place? As I said earlier, the Sahabas had to leave behind their properties, positions, belongings, money, everything behind. And when they reached Medina, of course, we know what all happened. Allah Subhanahu wa Prophet created a goodwill between the Muhajirs and the Ansar. Those details also, inshallah, we'll study later. It so happened that once when a Sahabi wished to visit Makkah for an Umrah, he was brutally attacked and all his belongings were again snatched away and he was persecuted almost to an extent that they were about to kill him. But it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will that he reached Medina safely. So the people of Medina, basically the believers, the Muslims, they felt that this was absolute high-handedness on the part of the Meccan Quraysh to continue their hostility against the innocent believers only for the reason that they had believed in Islam. So they thought that we should make them realize that what they were committing was gross injustice. So they thought that those particular caravans which would be plying en route Medina to Mecca of the Meccan Quraysh, they should be attacked in order that the Meccan Quraysh learn a lesson that they will not adopt this high-handed attitude and brutality against the innocent believers. So on one occasion, so on one occasion, Sando Hijri mein ek waqya ronama hua when Hazrat Abu Sufyan who at that time had not accepted Islam and was a he was in charge of that particular caravan which was flying from Syria to Makkah via Medina. A caravan, a kafila. Abu Sufan Razallahu Ta'ala Anu, who was not a Muslim, he was not a Muslim. 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 And this was rich merchandise belonging to the chiefs of the Meccan Quraysh. It had a lot of merchandise and wealth in it. So the believers felt that this was a good opportunity for us to make an attack. The moment Abu Sufyan, who got a sense of it or a feel that this is going to be attacked, this caravan is going to be attacked because this is 
laden with rich merchandise, he immediately sent word to the Meccan Quraysh in Makkah saying that your merchandise and your wealth is at stake. So you do something to escort this caravan safely to Makkah. So Abu Jahl immediately takes a call and he mobilizes a huge army and he sets out of Makkah towards Medina and just before Medina in a plane called Badr. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in a difficult situation. There are two options left before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One is to attack the caravan because it was unarmed of course. And number two is that the army from Makkah also has left by the Quraysh to confront that. اب جو ہے رسول اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے سامنے دو آپشنز رہے ایک خافلے پر جو ہے حملہ کرے بغیر ہتھیار والا یا پھر جو ہے قریش کا وہ لشکر جو آ رہا تھا اس کا مقابلہ کرے اکثر و بیشتر صحابہ کا جو ہے یہ کہ رائے تھی کہ ہم جو ہے بغیر ہتھیار کے وہ خافلے پر جو ہے ہم حملہ کرے اس لیے کہ ہمارے خود کے پاس بھی کوئی ہتھیار نہیں ہے اینڈ نائی دا وی ہیو دا ریسورسز اور دا ویئر ود آل اور دا weaponry or the arms and ammunition to confront the mighty Quraysh and therefore it would be the safest and the lucrative route for us is to attack the caravan. So there was a discussion on this matter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already decided and conveyed this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying that is yaidukum allahu ihdat ta'ifataini annaha lakum one of those two parties, either the caravan or the army, whichever you are going to confront, you will win over it. In the same breath, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also conveys this information to the Prophet Wasallam that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will that they should go ahead to confront the army rather than attack the caravan because Allah wants the truth to be established and prove in vain the battle, even though the criminals may dislike it. Now there was absolutely no second opinion at all. Sah- the Prophet also put this matter before the Sahabas. They all agreed. <clears throat> now it was a very tough decision that was taken. Prophet also could mobilize among the Sahabas only 313, the famous 313. Sahaba against the mighty Quraysh who had thrice that number almost a thousand who came with all the arms, ammunition, weaponry to crush the believers and here the believers are without any arms, without any horses or elephants with only and only the number is 313. However, it was a decision of Allah, Prophet Sallallahu had to execute it, Sahaba accepted it and Prophet Sallallahu now headed towards the plain of Badr and then the strategies of war was adopted and on the eve of the battle of Badr Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahabas cried before Allah, cried before Allah Is rabbakum? Particularly in the case of the Prophet Sallallahu we know in the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Seerat ki kitabon mein ye خاص طور پر رسول اکم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی جو حالت تھی جنگ بدر کے ایک رات پہلے ان کا گڑگرا کرنا ان کی احزاری ان کا رونا ان کا بل بلانا یہاں تک کہ حضرت ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ حد پہنٹر ان سے او پروفیٹ انف او پروفیٹ جو دعا will definitely be accepted by Allah سبحانہ و تعالیٰ انف you have cried not to this extent please please calm yourself حضرت ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ حد پہنٹر ان that was the kind of a lamenting seen seen by the prophet seen seen of the prophet as witnessed by the sahabas particularly by hazrat abu bakr we think islam has just come to us and we have just islam we have received islam on a platter that's why maybe we don't value it islam went through a roller coaster ride just imagine if not for the 313 and the prophet sallallahu 
would Islam have raised us? The crux of the dua what the Prophet placed before Allah was, Oh Allah, if you do not save this 313 now, which was the only stent I could mobilize, Oh Allah, in the last 15 years, 13 years of Makkan struggle, two years, the second year after Hijrah, almost 14 to 15 years of my struggle, only 313 Sahabas I could generate to Allah with your help. But if you do not show mercy and save them, there will be nobody to take your name after this, O Allah. Tera naam lene wala koi nahi rehega. Pandra saal ki mashakkat takalif ke baad Allah, mein ne 313 ko jama kiya. Aur tere hawale karta hoon. Tu agar inki kamyabi nahi rehega, inki jaan nahi bachayega, inko ghalba nahi dega, tera naam lene wala koi nahi rehega Allah iske baad. Allah ki rehmat josh mein aati hai. Foran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ke taraf se elan hota hai. I will aid you bi alfim min al malaikati murdifin. Ek hazar firishtay unko mein lagatar bhejunga aur tumhare saath wo jang mein sharik honge. Aur ye Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne ek prophecy, ek khush khabri Allah ke rasul ko jang e badar se pehle hi de diya taake dil mein itminan ho jaye. It was a moral booster. It boosted the confidence and the moral of the prophet and the sahabas. What they had with them was nothing but conviction. Faith, unflinching faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is only called what we normally say as Iman. Iman is not something which is just the kind of Iman that you and I may possess. That was the Iman of the Prophet, the Iman of the Sahabas. That was the only asset they had with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <clears throat> Victory comes only from Allah. Allah does not give victory on the basis of quantity or the resources. Allah gives victory on the basis of your quality of Iman. And this is a sunnah of Allah until the day of Qiyamah. And whatever comes into the Quran means it is relevant even today. will be relevant even tomorrow until the day of Qiyamah. The believers have strong, unflinching faith in Allah. That's it. Allah will grant them dignity. Honor, success, victory, not only in this world but also in the hereafter. In Allah Azizun Hakim, verily Allah is Almighty, all wise. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the backdrop of this particular <clears throat> battle of Badr, these verses are being revealed. And on the eve of the Badr, what else happened? Allah now says, Is Yogashi Kumun Nuasa Amanatam Minhu. وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَلْيُ تَحْهِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُزْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِدْزَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَرْبِتَ عَلَىٰ خُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُسَبِّتَ بِهِ الْأَخْدَامِ When overtook you slumber as a means of calmness from him or the means of security from him. From him refers to Allah. And he sent down upon you from the sky Rain that he may purify you, purify you with it. Wayuzhiba and kum ritsa shaitan and remove from you the impurities of shaitan. Waliyarbita Allah kulu bikum and that he may strengthen your hearts. Wayusabita bihil akdam and keep firm with it your feet or plant firm with it your feet. Jab chagay tumpar. Ung Aman Batare Aman Uski Tarafse or Usne Beja Yautara Tumper Asman Se Barish Take Otome Pako Safkare or Durka de Tumse Palidgi Shaitanki or Take Mazbutkare Tumare Dilunko or Sabitrake Uske Zare Tumare Hadmok. On the eve of the Battle of Badr, Allah Subhanahu Tala wanted the believers. To have a good sleep that night so that they could get up fresh in the morning to face the combat against the Meccan Quraysh. This was very necessary because they were as it is in a state of anxiety, worry, and tired as well. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down rain. Allah apni rahmat barsata hai. So that they may could do husul and wazu and be ready to face the enemies 
at the battle of badr so that they could do wazu they could clean themselves and they could have a ghusl and keep themselves fresh further allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with that wazu and that ghusl it removed and cleansed them from the corrupt thoughts of the shaitan shaitan jo palit ki dala tha unke dimag mein ho tum 313 ho bagair hathiyar ke hazar ka lashkar se tum jo hai mudbir karne wale ho kya ho gaya tumhe itni bewakoofi kaise tumne ye baat ko maan liya wagaira wagaira allah wanted all that to get eliminated from their minds so that they could not be focused pure yaksui ke sath wo jo hai milkar jo hai khurish ke khilaf hamla kar sake muqabila kar sake and further it had to strengthen their hearts that allah now is there with us we are proceeding in obedience to allah and his messenger so that they could keep themselves firmly planted with iman in their hearts all this was psychological advantages and benefits which allah granted to the believers on the eve of the battle of badr is you hi rabbuka ilal malaikati anni ma'akum fasabbitul ladina amanu سَأُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّوبَ فَاجْرِبُوا فَوْقَ الْأَنَاقِ وَاجْرِبُوا مِنْهُمْ كُلَّ بَنَانٍ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ شَاقُّوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ ذَلِكُمْ فَزُوقُوهُ وَأَنَّ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا نَّارًا وِي آر گوئنگ ٹو کنکلوڈ اپ ٹو ہیر جسٹ گیو انادر 5 ٹو 6 منٹس وی ول کمپلیٹ دس کائنڈلی ڈونٹ گو اوے سٹے ٹل دی اینڈ پلیز وین ریویلڈ یور لارڈ ٹو دی اینجلز that i am with you so keep firm those who believed saulqi fi qulubil ladina soon i will cast in the hearts of those who disbelieved roba terror fazribu fawqal anaq fawqal fawqal anaq so strike above their necks and strike at them at every fingertips that because shaqul lah wa rasulahu de opposed allah and his messenger and whoever opposes allah and his messenger then verily allah is severe in punishment zalikum that means that is his way so taste it and that the disbelievers and and that for the disbelievers is a punishment of the fire jab paigham bheja aapke rab ne farishton ki taraf ke main tumhare sath hu bas sabit qadam rakho un logon ko jo iman le aaye ان قریب میں ڈال دوں گا دلوں میں ان لوگوں کے جنہوں نے کفر کیا روب بس مارو ان کو گردنوں کے اوپر اور مارو ان کو ہر انگلیوں کے پور پور پر یہ اس لیے کہ انہوں نے مخالفت کی اللہ اور اس کے رسول کی اور جو کوئی مخالفت کرے اللہ اور اس کے رسول کا تو بے شک اللہ سخت ہے عذاب دینے میں یہی اللہ کا طریقہ ہے بس چکو اس سزا کو اور کہ کافروں کے لیے آگ کا عذاب ہے so these are all the psychological advantages which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the believers and prepared them spiritually physically emotionally against the most crucial battle the first battle that is being fought under the banner of islam it was the first exposure for the believers to fight such a battle and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides all the advantages for the believers though they were few in number comparatively but they had quality of iman in them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the disbelievers not only will face the defeat in this world but also in the hereafter they will be cast into the hell fire and the believers will ultimately triumph on account of their strong faith may allah help us to inculcate that kind of a faith what prophet and the sahabas had in them that is what is grossly missing in the muslim community today second to that is tawakkul on allah number 3 is unity May Allah grant all these to us in order that we always be victorious in this world and in the hereafter. Looking forward to seeing you, inshallah, next week with further verses, with the backdrop of Battle of Badr. Very powerful surah. Don't miss them. Be regular. Jazakallahu khair. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahu ma wa bihamdihi. Ka nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiraka wa natubu ilaik. Ameen. Wa akhir dawana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.